Lyle Menendez was 49 years old and had spent nearly half his life in prison when he agreed to talk to us. Hello? Hello? So here we are, all these years later. We spoke with Lyle Menendez for more than two hours. He was confident, articulate, and 28 years later, still eager to explain why he and his brother killed their parents. He shared intimate details about his childhood and the betrayal he said he felt when Eric confided to him days before the murders that their father was still molesting him. My father's raped, I said nothing. And I just feel like part of that pact I have with my dad is I'm keeping this secret. And for you to have done this to my brother, it's mm -hmm. like I kept my part of that sort of devil's pact. And you didn't. You know, and, and my mother just, you know, you let your children wake up in the home of a child molester every day? Lyle testified in the trial that not only did his mother cover for her husband's actions, she also sexually abused him. More than a quarter century after the murders, those feelings of anger and hurt were still close to the surface. My mother was very cruel. Uh, I believe she just very much resented uh, my brother and I from early, early on. As if you and Eric had come between her and your father. Yes, exactly. We reminded him of what his prosecutors still say about him. The Lyle is still trying to avoid some level of responsibility by blaming abuse when the abuse doesn't appear to have been so bad as to, as to cause a person to do that. I would trade my entire defense for a 30-second video of my father uh, raping me. I, I would trade my whole case for it because I think it's so sanitized and so easy to use the word abuse. Oh, abuse, the abuse wasn't so bad. Let's get down to the incident itself. When did you and Eric decide to kill your parents? Uh, we didn't decide to do it. Uh, it was, uh, we finally uh, just kind of got overwhelmed with this panic and emotion and, and made the decision to, to run in that room. The outside world saw what they thought was evidence of a lot of premeditation. Um, using a friend's driver's license to, you know, hide the fact that you went to San Diego and got weapons. I'd have to say, keep it. There's, you know, it's just not really entirely accurate. I didn't have a California ID, so there was no way to purchase a weapon uh, and, uh, other than my brother using this other kid's ID. But no disputing it, they did buy the guns in advance with a stolen ID. And there was this irrefutable fact the prosecutor pointed out. Lyle reloaded and fired that final shot at his mother's face while she was still alive and crawling desperately to get away. They saw that as the evidence of premeditation and cruelty. I certainly in the room wasn't making kind of decisions in a chaotic situation like that, but you know, reflecting afterwards, you know, uh, it haunts me. It, it does haunt me. The other uh, comment that would come up was, well, they you know, they could have just gone out and got in the car and driven away. You know, they, they didn't have to do this. A, a person like my father is not going to allow you to just take something that will ruin his life that he has so carefully crafted. He's not going to. He's not going to. No, I but, mean, but, 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 but you could have left. That's the point I'm trying to make. But leave and do what? Leave and just wait for yourself to be killed in a parking lot? I mean... Uh, you really thought that would leave happen? Leave and tell who? They didn't believe anyone would help them, said Lyle. Not even the police. Speaking of which, that 911 call Lyle made? Who was the person that was shot? My mom and my dad! You were so, uh, you know, um, grief-stricken on that call and lying at the same time. Yeah, I absolutely broken down with stress. Both of us were just in such a state of trauma that I just... It just poured through on that call and made it very easy to make that call, really. But you, know, so, but you could have told them and said you misled them. Why, why that? Well, I, I mean, I don't think uh, I was going to tell the Beverly Hills Police Department that, uh, yeah, I killed my parents and here's why, and they were going to go, okay, go back home. So uh, just self-preservation at that point. Lyle strongly denied the prosecution's claim that he and Eric killed their parents for money. Furthermore, he said he didn't think their case should have even gone to trial. This case should have been settled. Uh, there are like two, two to three hundred parasite cases a year where a parent is killed by a child, and they are almost all related to abuse, and they are almost all settled. This case, they picked out as different. Yeah, but Lyle, it, it was different. Guys like you in places like 
you lived and acts like you committed. I mean, this, it's, this is a big, right. splashy deal. Exactly. And I think that it was very easy because it was Beverly Hills. My father had a lot of money to sort of sell this headline that these brothers killed for money. You haven't seen Eric in how long? Wow. 1996. Hmm. Getting to be a long time. Yeah, I miss my brother every day. Eric Menendez declined our interview request. At the time, he'd been married for 18 years, Lyle for 14. And remember, Eric had said both he and his brother wanted to pursue careers in politics? In a highly unusual way, they've done it, sort of. Eric started a life care and hospice program for inmates at the Richard Donovan Correctional Facility near San Diego. And 500 miles north, Lyle was president of the inmate government at Mule Creek State Prison. I know it's going to be uh, a, a suffering for me, but I feel like uh, I can find some purpose here. Then in February 2018, a reunion of sorts. Lyle was moved to the same facility where Eric was serving his sentence. They were even housed in the same unit. 